Hey everybody, this is Pam with the Paper Outpost. I thought we would have a little fun making um, some watercolor flowers today. I'm going to grab some watercolor paper. Um, and this, this is a great way to add personal touches to a junk journal. Maybe I'll just leave it on here. Because oh, sometimes it'll bleed through to the next page or it'll roll over. Because I am not a neat watercolor person. And I haven't been watercoloring in a while, and I really miss it. But um, you can use these for focal points, for um, journal covers, for the fronts of greeting cards, for embellishments in your junk journals. Just so many fun things to have a bunch of these. If you just feel like sitting down and, uh, you know, painting some flowers one day. This is a Be Creative book. I think I got it at Hobby Lobby. But it's just a book of watercolor paper, which makes it nice to use. And what you can do is you can paint the whole thing and then just cut it up as you need it. Or you can use the whole thing as is, totally your choice. Um, and you can tape this down with washi tape. If, oh, there's a good reason to use the washi tape. Well, let's do that. Okay. So washi tape, if you have a craft mat, um, this way your... your um, paper doesn't curl or bend on you and um, you can use a washi tape to stick it to a table or something like that it's kind of a nice idea you can also do it from the side it's probably a better idea okay but I'm just going to use a small palette this is a J J Jane Davenport palette today because it's the one I had on my desk and um, oh, there's a piece of thread <laughs> so my supplies are so well taken care of um, and if you're new to watercoloring, this is, very, this is going to be very simple. Anybody can do this. I would recommend if you don't know what brush to get, grab a round brush because it's going to give you a big body of brush, but also a fine little point for detail work. So a little dab will do you with um, uh, a watercolor round brush. Okay, so there's oil brushes and watercolor brushes, and this is a watercolor brush, I think. Yeah, okay. So I've just got... Mm, Okay, glass of water. I'm gonna tip wet my brush in, and you can do this a lot of ways. Like, um, you can go ahead. Like, well, let's do wet um, on wet. If you've never done this before, this is kind of fun. Okay, so you're gonna you're gonna wet your paper. That's what you're gonna do. You're gonna come in here and wet that paper, and this is what's gonna cause that paper to curl. This is why we taped it down. And wet the paper, and this is gonna allow the pigment to move in wild and crazy ways of unexpected abandon. Okay, so now let's say maybe we want to have a little sunrise or something going here. It would be better if you had totally clean stuff because then you don't have green and you're yellow and you don't have a green sunrise. But We may have a green sunrise. Okay, if that's going to happen, you come over here with a piece of tissue and you kind of blot off the green and you start again. Okay. All right, so this was a sunrise in the morning. Okay, I'm getting it on the thing behind. doesn't matter. It's my craft mat. Okay, and maybe I don't have an orange, but I'll make an orange. So, uh, okay, that's supposed to be red. looks kind of pink. And then let's get some more of that yellow. And we make an orange. Okay, so there's some orangey sky going here. All right. And then maybe we're going to have a little water in the background. You're really supposed to have a clean water and then a dirty water. So your dirty water you put in first and really clean water. But it was just too much to gather this morning. You know what I mean? All right, so here's some aqua bluish stuff. That's nice. Yeah, there we go. Okay. We're just doing a background at the moment. Okay, a little more blue. And um, now maybe we're going to do some uh, green on the bottom. Which maybe we're getting closer to grass and stuff like that. So there we go. There we go. So now we have this pretty background already made. And um, you can use the wetness that's there already to start to create some fun little things. Like maybe let's go for a very contrasting color to all of this hoopla. and hoot Nanny going on, I'm going to go for the purple. And I don't know what's going to happen. We're just going to try to do some. These are like small 
flowers. Okay, they might be bigger than we thought because they're going to spread. There's going to be random little like hairy flowers in the background. It's going to keep spreading until the paper dries. That's what's going to happen. So, and if you if you want to freeze frame it at any point, you pull out a heat gun or a blow dryer and you blow dry it. Now, blow dryer might move the paint. A heat gun will just give heat and not so much wind. That's kind of the difference. Okay, so we'll let those blossom. And so some little ones in the air. You know, they, they fly away. That's what happens with these flowers. Um, <clears throat> that's actually looking pretty cool. That's how fast stuff can come together. Do I still have that blow dryer hooked up? Let me see. Nope. I actually put something away. Look at that. Oh, no. Or did I? Oh, not there. It must be still plugged in. Hang on. It's still, oh, it is. It's still plugged in. Let's see if I can. The cord's not lining up. Okay, let's so get you over here. Try right. Okay, I'm now using my heat gun. Hang on. Okay, I heat gunned it for a few seconds there. Now, you can come back and you can enhance what you did if you so choose. It's somewhat dry. There's still going to be a little bit of bleeding and stuff like that, but not as much as when I first started. Okay, so let's just see. Got a relatively dryish brush, but it's still damp. So let us put like little central dots. Maybe I'm going to use this blue. I'm getting a concentrated amount on here. Maybe for you know, little, little dotties in the center. They're not going to migrate too much because they're sitting on more of a drier uh, watercolor. Can you see that? Okay. Okay. Here's you get a fine point. These are still a little bit more wet. They're bleeding just a little bit. Not too much though. Not bad. All right. So wash that off. Wipe that. That all nice and dry. Now we can take maybe some green stemmage stuff. Again, I'm going to work with um, not a lot of water on the brush because I want to make little stems that don't bleed too much. Okay, so I'm just going to use a light wispy line. This is like as the wind blows. Well, the may attach at the bottom. Some may not. Maybe they all blow from a similar angle. Some of them may cross each other. Okay. And do thinner lines. Some might be thicker. Might be thinner, might go behind each other. That's okay. So, this is like a little field flowers. And it comes together pretty fast. Maybe that one is flying off. Okay. And, um, there you go. So that was pretty easy. I'm just going to take that aside and let that dry. I'll just take this off. And you can reuse the um, washi tape if you want, or you can get clean stuff if it's got colored paint on it, which mine will. Okay. Uh, so there you go. That's one easy way to do it. And now let's, um, that took us all of nine minutes. And um, let's do one that, uh, is maybe dry. So we see some different ways to do things like that. So I'm just going to get another piece of um, watercolor paper here. Actually, I can leave this one attached because we're going to work with dry. <clears throat> that mean, meaning I'm not going to totally saturate this to use the movement of the water to create the movement of the pigment like we did here. 
Um, I'm going to wet my brush a little bit. To make sure it's clean. Get the previous color out. And, um, okay, so maybe I'll work with a red. Nice. I'm just using whatever's in my palette here. Okay. Okay. So, oops, oh, I got a drop of water on there. Imagine that. Can't imagine. Okay, so we're going to use the shape of the brush to make the flat petals. And however, however it comes out, we're just going to roll with it. Oh, that's pretty. Um, here. We can just do a bunch of these. Little five petal flowers leaving the, the center um, somewhat blank. And the little extra splatters, I think they look like. I should probably go closer for you so you can see. Um, they look like little pollen or dust or something coming from the flowers. That's what I tell myself. Oops, I need more paint. There we go. Sometimes the ones that are biggest are closest to you, so you can do some bigger ones in your foreground or what it seems visually closer to you. Some bigger ones. Some hanging off the, the page works well. Very relaxing to do watercolor. And pictures actually come um, together much more quickly, I find, than with pencil drawing. Pencil drawing takes me, personally, a lot longer to do because it's a lot more um, fine touch, fine tuning, little tweaks here and there. And I think these kind of, I don't know, are these daisies, are these irises? I don't know what they are, but they're kind of cute. All right. Okay. And I think I'm going to take it up into this corner. You don't touch the page as much. You don't get as much of a big flower, which is a way to use the same brush to do smaller petals. Okay, so I kind of goofed that flower, but what it's teaching me is that I can do um other styles of flowers in here as well so let me just do one more of these babies the little petal technique and then maybe we'll come in and we'll do some lavender mixed in here let's see okay let's get some purple a little purple here there's a little bit of the red Okay, a little more water, not as purple. Maybe, maybe a little more purple. Okay. Okay, so um, let's say we wanted to do a lavender flower. Um, we can start with one of those. One of those. And just make like this little downward. It all depends. I've got a lot of water in this brush, I'll probably use less little uh, thing. Okay. And then there's another one here. And you can, you can connect them or leave them separate. And it's like a little chain of petals that goes down. So this is wet on dry, which means a wet brush on dry paper. Okay. 
I'm gonna be one more over here. Bigger one. Whether they connect or not, it doesn't really make it. I mean, they're just a different style of painting. Some will come out more intense depending on the amount of pigment that you have on your brush. This is also a fun way to make a master board if you want to potentially cut it up one day or come back later and look at it and decide what you're going to do with it. You don't have to make any decisions right now. It's kind of like mass making. Um, now that this has created a little bleed, maybe I want to take that idea and give these little edges of these flowers some of this similar purple that will get drawn up into the paint. The base if it's still wet enough. Um, in these little petaleroos. Kind of fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wherever you see your paint is still wet, it, it'll still transmit the paint to other places in that petal. We could have done that earlier on and gotten more of this effect, but we're coming in later in the game and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You can also daub away. See, if I put too much paint down, I can take a tissue and daub away and it won't be too overwhelming or intense. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so now maybe we need some stemmage here. Use the same color to unify the two flowers together. The stems don't always have to go straight. Sometimes they can bend and turn a little bit. They don't actually have to connect right to the flower. If it doesn't connect right to the flower, it's okay. All right. Sometimes they're just suggestions of stems. It's okay if you don't have all the connecting parts and stuff like that. Is this impressionism, I guess? Sort of like realism, but not. I mean, it's not a realism at all. Um, maybe we want to anchor a little bit of this with some green. And let's take our green. I want to maybe darken it up a little bit. And uh, let's see, we start mixing these all together. We, oh, we might get a little, yeah, okay. Now we need more green. Uh, now we have a nice brown. Go oh, you can't see any of that. That's lovely. We have a nice brown going here. It was green and this red stuff mixed together, but I want to take a little more green. So I'll keep adding a little bit of the green to take it back to the green side. When I get a green I like, and I can start making some little leafy things. And leaves don't necessarily have to come from the stems. Maybe they're, they're background leaves. Um, like, let's say, for example, um, uh, little uh -huh. little frond like things. Maybe we we'll just kind of put them in here for some green village. Maybe it's grass, maybe it's leaves, we don't know. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. These are very, very simple, rudimentary, leaf-like things. But just to fill in the little spaces and do a little greenery. Mm -hmm. And um, try not to drag your, your fingers through it as you do it. I do that a lot. Maybe it's coming from the little back of the flower or the or the stem attaches. Maybe there's something there that's a little green, a little visually green thing. 
and um, fill these in. I'm going to do dots there. Okay, I put some green ones here. <coughs> yeah, that's trying to fill in nicely. So, um, if you use two or three colors, you're generally going to do some pretty cool effects. And maybe over here with the lavender, uh, maybe it's more like wispy little leaves. Oh, maybe going the same way. There's a little bit of greenery here at the bottom. Mm -hmm. a green thing here. And greenery here. Here. And maybe I'm going to leave this open space. If I want to use this for a card, something like that, then I might leave this open so that I could put happy birthday or um, something like that. That might be fun. I might you can also use the green to outline a little more definition. And just a little shape. Accenting up what you did. Running it down one side. Of some said leaves just for fun. Goofing around. This is anybody can do this stuff. Um, and if you want, you can also come in. Let's say you're, you've done your green leaves, but you want to use the same color, but you want to have some different effects. Maybe you can just come in and you can randomly just fill in with little pointillism dots. It just makes um, little stippling marks to fill in white space, which is fine. Mm -hmm. Gives that same uniformity, but you're adding another element, which is kind of fun. If you choose to take it further, maybe you choose not to do this, but it's always your choice. Just want to show you a few fun little things you can. Do all these things with one brush. This round brush gives you the pointy tip and the belly, the fatter belly, for which you can you can play. And if you want to even have more fun, you can splatter, which is always fun. You just use up what's on your brush. You can even go over the white space, which makes it look kind of cool. Almost looks like it's rain or pollen or something like that in the background. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit more of that up. And turn your brush, give it different angles. And um, you can even do that a little bit with the other color that we were using. So a little bit of the red and the purple. Well, adding to the dimensions that are going on here. That's kind of fun too. There. So lots of fun to be had. Hope just like this little foray into a watercolor painting. So this is our wet on wet because we used a wet brush on a wet paper. This is uh, wet <clears throat> on dry because we used a wet brush on dry paper. So there you go, folks. I hope you had fun. We'll carry on. Sunshine, are you here? Yes? Do you have something to say? Not much. I'm pretty out of... Nothing has happened. Because we just did a video. And I've... Okay, so I'm moaning. Sunshine is moaning. I don't know if you can hear my moaning is over. Um, Sunshine, canine reporter, reporting that I moaned. I think my moan was a sound of disturbance. I was being disturbed from my sleepy bed. It was very comfortable. I was very happy over there. And now I'm here. I'm very happy I'm here. Don't get me wrong. I'm solely thrilled that I'm here. But I was really happy over there. And I would like to go back there now. <laughs> okay, fine. I, we get the point. Sunshine out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, he's a little moody today. That's all right. We all have our days. It's okay. So there you go, folks. If you had fun, I hope you had fun. Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. My podcasts come out Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, you can also watch video podcasts any day of the week. 
on Spotify. And I have an Etsy shop where you can find bundles and all sorts of other things when I have them available. And also I have an Amazon shop if you're looking for favorite tools and supplies. Um, also, um, I have a t-shirt shop if you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. You can get that on a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a t-shirt, a mug tote, or water bottle. And remember most of all that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon. If you've never tried watercolor, I hope you give it a try. I hope this is your year. It's a lot of fun. It's very relaxing. And there's so many fun and easy techniques to try. Um, and I think you're going to find it opens up your world in the world of junk journaling. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.